Format 31, I had a question coming out of section 6.3, number 45. And so we were asked to find what this number is equal to. So I am going to rewrite this as 6 times log base 8 of 4. And let's just save the 6 until later. All right, so we'll just figure out what log base 8 of 4 is equal to and then mess with it. So if I take a closer look at log base 8 of 4, what I need to do is I need to figure out what exponent would go right here so that I could get 8 to turn into the x, or 8, excuse me, to turn into 4. So I need to figure out what is that exponent, because again, logarithms are exponents. I know it looks weird, but this expression is an exponent. It's literally this exponent. What do I need on base 8, right? How do I get from 8 to 4, right? How do I get from 8? How do I get from my base to my argument using nothing but exponents? So how do I get from 8 to 4 using nothing but exponents. Well, the thing about 8 and 4 is they're both base 2. So 8 is 2 cubed and 4 is 2 squared. So it's great that they're both the same base. That's the reason I'm able to do this problem. Uh, we'll be able to learn, or we will learn how to do um, problems like this when you don't have the same bases, but it's easier when everything's the same base. So this becomes 2 to the 3x equaling 2 squared. And when you have two expressions or two powers that are equal and their bases are the same, well, then their exponents have to be the same, meaning that this would simplify to just 3x having to equal 2 or x is 2 thirds. So this expression here, right, that one that I started with, this is just equal to 2 thirds. And that's all great. It just keep in mind I did not finish my problem because I had this 6 initially out here. So I'm looking at 6 times 2 thirds. And when we take a look at 6 times 2 thirds, that's 6 times 2, which is 12. 12 over 3 is 4. So this is my end answer. All right. And now this is one way to do it. And, and when we get to a later section, technically section 6.5, they're gonna, you're going to learn something called the power property. And I, I think it makes these problems easier. And when I say these problems, I mean, what do you do when you have a coefficient out in front? Um, and if you've ever done any logarithmic work before, you've probably seen this property. And if you haven't, that's okay. We'll pick it up in 6.5. But what the power property says is when you have a constant out in front, you can move it up to your argument as an exponent. So that's what you see here. Instead of my argument just being 4, now I'll make it as 4 to the 6th. And what's nice about that, or nice-ish, is that 4 to the 6th is 4096, and 4096 in and of itself is 8 to the 4th. And it's, it's simpler here because when the base of your logarithm and the base of your power are the same, the only thing that survives is the exponent. That's why you see all this canceling. Because literally, what exponent would I need on 8? Ooh, that's larger than I wanted it to be. Um, what exponent would I need on 8 to get to 8 to the 4th? Well, that answer is 4. All right, that's the exponent I need. So the power property makes it a little bit simpler, but we can still do it without the power property. We just have to take this logarithmic expression, and personally, I find it easier to think of it exponentially and then solve there. All right, thanks so much. Bye.